Hi, welcome to Seymour's World. I'm Seymour Kazimersky on Think Tech Hawaii. Today's show is a very, very special show and I'll explain why. We titled it, I Beat Cancer. I have been diagnosed with cancer. It's called CLL, which is chronic lymphatic leukemia. I can't e explain all the different nuances for it, but I'm going to fight this cancer, and then I'm going to beat this cancer. And to do it, I have asked two of my very, very good friends to help me because they have both beat cancer as well, Debbie Atkinson and Tanya Reed. I've known both of you for many, many years. I've known you through your ups and downs with cancer. Mm -hmm. And I have to learn from you how mm -hmm. to cope with what I have. Uh, on a very simple level, uh, I want people to understand that the big C is no longer what it used to be. We have so many people surviving all sorts of mm -hmm. cancers in so many different ways, holistically, medically. They, they, some of them go to far off countries to do it. Some of them do it here with chemotherapy and some with new treatments that are just coming online mm -hmm. through the new clinical trials. In my case, just so that you understand, I am going to be under a new clinical trial out of Sloan Kettering in New York, which will not necessitate chemotherapy. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, everything will work well and uh, you will see my progress through this over the next few months of Seymour's World. But uh, I can tell you this, I'm a fighter and just mm -hmm. as these ladies are fighters, I think uh, I feel very, very comfortable uh, with what, uh, what is going to transpire over, over the next few months. So Debbie, first of all, you are uh, the best cheesecake maker in the world. Oh. <laughs> that, okay. That's that's my title health for food. you. Uh, well, I don't know. Is, is cheesecake health food? No. I, I honestly think it is. You know why? Because I think that smile on your face right now is indicative of what cheesecake does. Mm -hmm. You see, I'll find a, a reason. smile on your face. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. I'll find a reason to make sure that we can eat the food that we like to eat. Because I think part of beating cancer is your mind, isn't it? Did you find that as you were coping with it? Yes, I think you're right there. Um, always our, our outlook influences our health, no matter what issues you have. And everybody has something going on, right? And did you find that when you were, when you were first diagnosed with it, was it like it was for me, oh my God? Oh yes, oh yes. I think that's the most difficult time, probably the diagnosis through the first few months till you start taking action. And did it take you long to do that? Once you find the treatment that you're going to follow and that you're comfortable with, I think you feel like you're taking action. And I think people, when they feel more in control of their lives, have a better mental outlook. And that's a very positive feature, isn't it? Right. I, I think that's actually, my feeling is that's one of the most important features of it is that mental outlook. Tanya, you have survived multiple cancers, I haven't have. you? How many? Um, actually four. I forgot oh. about my thyroid. Oh my God, four <laughs> cancers. Mm -hmm. And did you go through chemo with, with Well, no, because the first one was 74. And there was no chemo at that time. They did a modified radical, so they took the lymph nodes out, so, you, so that's all they did then. Mm -hmm. And so, and I didn't have time for chemo. I had two, one and three year old, mm -hmm. and they kept me sane. They just, and my husband, they kept me above mm -hmm. ground, right? It was mm -hmm. wonderful. I mean, I had no time to think of myself, which was probably good. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they helped me through. I think, mm -hmm. Tanya, I, I remember those times because yeah. we, were, we were with you during those times. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I always remembered was that your kids and your husband were, were there for you to look at. And that gave you that... My biggest that, supporters, yes. Definitely. And they were there for you, which absolutely. I think is, is, is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Debbie, I have to ask you something. Uh, after the diagnosis and after the beginning of treatment, uh, did, you, did you feel during the, and this is important for me to understand, did you go through ups and downs feeling that uh, is this worth it, is it not worth it, or were you just gung-ho, I'm going to do it and I'm going to beat it? I was... I think, first of all, you need to find somebody who's treating you that you have absolute mm -hmm. confidence in. And it's good, like you've done, to explore different, different treatment options so that you, when you finally decide on something, you feel confident and you feel like 
you've made that choice rather than you've been steered into something that you're not sure about. But um, yes, there are some ups and downs, of course, because I think we go through the five, Kubler Ross's five stages of grief, too. So there's a certain amount of denial, and then there's a certain amount of anger, and then there's bargaining, and then there's, what is it, depression, and then there's acceptance. Mm -hmm. So we're not static, we're, we change. That is a, a very well. Now I'm listening to you and thinking, what stage am I? In? You know, <laughs> well, where am I right now? We don't stay in one stage no. either. Yeah. We bounce around. So yeah. that, I hope that answered your question. Yes, it does. <laughs> Tanya, how, uh, how about you? Did you have ups and downs through the coping mechanism? I didn't so much with my first cancer because I was so busy with the kids, and there was no um, chemo or anything. I mean, they assumed they got everything, and that's the way they did it then. Actually, I think it was harder for my second one because everybody was grown and home by ourselves. And, and I, I, I felt a little sorry for myself at first, actually. Mm -hmm. But it didn't last very long because at this point in my life, we talked about it. Before the 74, you didn't talk to people. You didn't even know anybody who had cancer. I mean, so there was so much support from friends and from people people bringing food over and just you know, Jim's Exchange Club and Seymour helped me go get a, get, make sure I had a PET scan right away. Mm -hmm. And just everybody was wonderful. And that was such a big help. And my husband's a big help. Well, Jim, as we know, is the light of your life still after all these years. And I wonder sometimes Almost why. Almost 50 years. But, <laughs> but he is oh, still definitely yeah, the light of yes, your life. Yes. I know that. And, and, and for you, how about your kids? How, 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 how did it affect your kids? Well, they were eight and 10. So I probably wasn't as busy as Tanya with a yeah. one and three year old, but they were pretty young. Sure. And they were, they were incredible. Because I had to have a lot of surgery. And they were just really cute and really um, supportive. And there was one time when they tried to, this is a funny, yeah, please. <laughs> they tried to get a dent out of a ping pong ball. And they <laughs> said, Mom, don't you just light a match? <laughs> and the dent pops out. And I said, yeah, yeah, do that. Because I wasn't feeling very well. And they did, and they're standing right next to me. And the thing burst into flames and landed on the couch and scorched it. But it was like, it was a lesson in what's important in life. It was like, right. who cares about the couch? Right. We didn't light a fire and everybody's safe. Yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we all just burst into laughter. So laughter is such a great remedy when you're I think it, it, in the it, dumps. It, I think you're right. <laughs> uh, my personal feeling as I'm you know, just getting through this over the last two weeks and figuring out what to do, I am really taking, and of course I'm asymptomatic, so I don't, you know, I'm still playing tennis, I'm still playing mm -hmm. golf, I'm still mm -hmm. busy with my Make Them Smile program and mm -hmm. my You're in Charge program and all the galas and events that I do and yes. all that stuff. And very honestly, I, I am not going to let this thing beat me that down as uh, an iota as far as I can. I'm going to keep doing what I can do for as long as I can do it. And, and you should. As long as the treatment allows me to. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. which, is, which is, I think, the important part. Tanya, for you, what about some incidences that you had that were, I mean, Debbie just brought up one that made them all <laughs> laugh. Did you have anything that really, that you can remember during that period? When I first had my first cancer, and I was 20, no, I was 30, my mom came to help me with the boys. The lady came over from the Cancer Society showing me how to do the exercises, and Mom says, she's been out mowing the lawn already. <laughs> and like, the lady looked at me like, I, <laughs> but my mom was right. I had been out mowing the lawn. <laughs> and so that was the end of the lady being over there, but she meant really well. But, you know, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. The whole point is both of you had this great positive attitude with their ups and downs, mm -hmm. I know that, mm -hmm. but this great positive attitude. I told, just to tell our audience, I told my oncologist, uh, he said, well, you know, you might have to have chemo and this and that, and I said, well, uh, you'll have to schedule it around my tennis and my golf yeah. and yes. all my activities, you know, uh, because that's more important to me than having chemo. And he just laughed his head off because he had not heard that before. You know, everybody thinks that, oh my God, I got to right. do this, I got to do that. But I think attitude is really critical. I have to say that yes. when the second time I had cancer, then it was in 01, and I kind of felt sorry for myself then, you know, and it was like, oh, 
I'm, I'm, I think I'm feeling sorry for myself. I shouldn't be doing that. But I needed a little time to do that, and then I was, I was fine. Because the kids were gone. They were in college. It was Jim and I home alone, you know, and, mm -hmm. and Jim is a wonderful support. But I just did feel sorry for myself. I don't know if you ever did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought, oh, I'm, you know, I've got to get out over this because this isn't helping me any to feel sorry for myself. That's excellent. I remember visiting you in the hospital. And yeah. yeah, you were you were feeling sorry for yourself, and I tried to you know pull you up a little bit, and I I, I realize it's something that has to come from within. It really is. Yeah, you know, it's 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 critical. Well, it's like why why now after, mm -hmm. I mean it was like thirty years. Yeah, you know, so yeah. it was like oh boy. <laughs> But. Well, blessings to both of you guys, because there's no doubt in my mind that you are perfect for what people have to see as fighting something that they think could be the end of the world for them, the end of their lives, and everything has changed, mm, and it absolutely. was changed. I find that uh, when I was diagnosed two weeks ago, uh, all of a sudden, my life changed. You know, I had to, I had to yes. think about what's important. Did you, do you remember that far back? Was I it, do. And how was that for you? That was really, that was very difficult. Again, I think the hardest time is right after you're diagnosed. Mm -hmm. I think because so Because there's that disbelief and why me and you, and everybody would feel sorry. Anybody would feel a little mm -hmm. bit sorry for themselves. Well, you know, looking at you two now, number one, you couldn't tell that you have, that you had cancer. And number two, both of you are so active in your community events and everything that you mm -hmm. do. And we're going to spend the second half of the show talking about that. I want people to know that you actually become, I think, more active after you've survived cancer. You start to realize that giving back to the community and doing more for others is as important than what you did before you had cancer. Am I mm -hmm. right with that? You're right. And I'm yeah. pointing to Tanya. She's wearing well, a makeup smile button yes. right now. Yours <laughs> fell off. But that's <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know where it went. That's all right. <laughs> and Tanya, you were our first volunteer. I was. For Make Him Smile. I was. And I'll never forget because she said, is there anything I can do to help? Mm -hmm. And I loved you for that. I loved the idea that you would do anything, whether it was accompanying the musicians in the hospitals. Well, especially or especially it was the children. Maybe. Yes, especially. That was, that's hard. I know, I know. And, but you did it and, and you were able to mm -hmm. go with the musicians and visit the kids and see the smile and the whole program, of course. How important it was for them, them. Yes. yes. Well, we've got to take a, a short break, but then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about today and what, what your future is all about and what you've done since that, uh, that awful time or the time that you had with cancer. I don't look at it as awful and I don't want you people to look at it as awful either. Cancer is something that you get. Uh, some people get diabetes, some people get cancer, some people have an accident and they lose a limb. In, in my case, uh, I'm actually very, very strong about it, and I'm not uh, not taking any prisoners. You know, I'm going to just live my life the way the way I think uh, we should. And these two young ladies are an absolute example for us. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> we try. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on Think Tech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider. And we're on ThinkTech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock. And we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners. And I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. This is Steve Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I do shrink wrap, which is now going to every other week, all during the summer and maybe forever after. Take care of your mental health this summer. Have a good time. Do what's fun and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha. See you then. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Hibachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. 
I've got the biggest smile on my face because I have two beautiful young women here with me. We have Debbie Atkinson and Tanya Reed, both friends of mine who are cancer survivors and are helping me in my journey of trying to figure out how to deal with cancer that I was diagnosed with two weeks ago. So uh, we talked in the first part, we talked about what it was like during that time when you were diagnosed and uh, trying to face up to it, but then it's over and you're in remission and now you're leading a life. Did you change? Did you find there was change in your life? Debbie, you first. I, I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit. When I Please. was diagnosed, I had a very philosophical surgeon who gave me the Buddhist Bible. Oh. And he said, come on, Deb, you're no different than anybody else. Everybody has something. And the, the attitude of the Buddhist towards life and death is different than some of ours. And I, I'm not an expert on this, so I, I won't go on about the religious differences but it helped me put my existence into perspective and he said to me you can use this to enjoy your life more very good and so i would i'd go for walks and i'd try and look at every leaf on the tree mm -hmm. and and just walk out and say what a beautiful day it is that's excellent because that happened to me last night we were at the outrigger canoe club for dinner and my daughter was there and i said i want a picture with you and i took a picture with her and i looked at the picture and i looked at all at how beautiful it was around because mm. you start to realize how important the little things are mm -hmm. it's not just the big things that you are in life tanya how about you what was that moment for you that all of a sudden changed the way you were looking at things you mean when i had I yeah. got cancer. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of time to think about myself because the kids were so little. Mm -hmm. And and I think it was good because I didn't, I mean, every once in a while I'd feel sorry for myself. I mean, and that's pretty normal. Mm -hmm. But I had such joy in my children and, and watching him grow up. And my husband, Jim, was such a big help for me too that I don't remember a lot of, because it was so long ago. I was 30, 30 years old. And so I think I just put myself into my husband and my children's life, and and that fulfilled, and that your fulfilled day. what yeah. I needed, and yeah. didn't really. I never. I don't think I ever thought I wasn't going to survive. I, I really don't. I just. You were very. I just. Positive I was very positive, and I just went through life doing what I would do and mm -hmm. raising my family. Mm -hmm. So I think I. I felt more sorry for myself when I had cancer, whenever, when the kids had left. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I had a little period of feeling sorry for myself. Uh -huh. And then, okay, I got out of that and I, w and I was just fine. I you know, did my line dancing, I did things with all my friends, did my yard work. So I, I got out of it, but I think it happens to everybody that they, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel sorry for yourself. Right. It's, it's, a very, it's very easy to do. Well, I have to say that uh, your dancing has always oh, yeah. been a big part of your life. I remember... <laughs> my partner once. Yes, yes, I remember... Oh, for my birthday. Yes, I do remember. It was after my second bout of That's cancer. Right. Yeah. We had a big party, oh. Yeah. and oh, we, we had so much fun. And so we had a, a band, yeah. and we were oh. just... Everybody was dancing. It was fabulous. It just was fabulous. I love so it. So stuff like that just makes yeah. you smile and... But, you know, that's what's key for all of us who are facing yeah. any type of disease. For me, it's cancer. For mm -hmm. somebody, it's something else. Do things that make you happy. Do things that make you feel like you can... And, you know, do, it with pe and do it with people that help you. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Now, Debbie, we have some books here. <laughs> I have always said that you are an amazing talent when it comes to reading books. I've read three of them. I haven't read the fourth book. But, Debbie, can you tell us a little bit about what you've done here? Well... I love to write, and I write crime fiction, and these are four of the books in, in the series, and I Can am, I add something? Yes. There is sex in some of these books. <laughs> oh, no. You should yeah, know there is a little bit of sex. My husband keeps telling me oh. to put more in it. Oh, more. But, okay, go ahead. Tell us know, about it. No, I the mean, book. that's something I'll have to work on, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, they're, they're, they're suspenseful thrillers that take place here in Hawaii. I... Um, I used to work on the Big Island, and as I drove around from place to place, I'd think, somebody needs to write a good mystery that shows the islands as those of us who live here see them. 
So that's what I was trying to do, weave some of the legends and myths into the I think it's fabulous. If, <laughs> if, if any, if you want, are they available on Amazon? They're or? available on Amazon, and they just look audio up you. books, yes, or the titles. Um, the library probably has them, too. Okay. So Good. Yeah, and they're, uh, out they're there. all under uh, Deborah Atkinson? Terrell, yeah, my we listed whole, you as it looks Debbie. like my driver's license. It's, uh, okay, <laughs> all right. So it's under, so if people want to find your books, they're under Deborah Atkinson. They just yes. type that into Amazon or yes. wherever they're, they're, they're looking for it. And yes. what else do you do with your life? I know a few things. You're helping your <laughs> husband, right? Yeah. Well, I, I've been helping him in the office occasionally. He, yeah sometimes needs that extra hand. Um, yeah, I, I'm working on a new book on oh. helping parents deal with a child who is an addict because right. I've mm -hmm. had that experience and I felt like parents could use more guidance. So that's finished and I'm trying to sell it oh, wow. now. That's a process. Um, and I have a new fiction book that's a start of a new series that I'm working on selling too. That's and you finished. still work out and you make jewelry. I do. I hammer on metal, I say. Yes, I she hammer, does. I pound metal. So talk about somebody who's always <laughs> busy and somebody who has taken their life to the max today. Debbie, you are one of them. You are well, you're you you never stop. I know that. And I think that's I think that's part of your uh, one of the good reasons that you were able to survive cancer as well as you did. That strength that you have, that inner drive, that motivation, the ability to take whatever is in front of you and just run over it and do it the way the way you have to do it well thanks Seymour it's true. Mm -hmm. it's true I think too some of it is um, science I I mean cancers differ and I I don't pat myself on the back so much I even cringe a little when we say breast cancer survivor because I've lost some really good friends to this and it isn't because they didn't fight right. and um, we want to be really careful that we don't make make it make anybody have a sense of failure. Mm -hmm. right. Do you that's know what a, I mean? Oh, that's a very good point, and a very very good point. What about you, Tanya? What are you doing now these days? You're still dancing. Yeah, I'm still line dancing. I know. I'm a I avid it. gardener. I, I'm in my yard all the time. I um, walk my dog. My little beagle. And you were a caregiver to somebody oh, for yes. a long I, period actually, of time. Oh, yes. Actually, I just, I, re I retired about um, maybe eight years ago. Yeah. And you were a nurse as well. I'm an, right? I, I am a nurse. I yeah. still am a nurse. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I um, did mostly private duty all the time because, so my husband and I could travel to the mainland in the summers because you don't get job, time off from a job. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I always um, took care of... Um, had my own private patients, so it worked out really well for and me. And you were you were very consistent with that for many many years. Yeah, I well, I worked in the hospital sometimes for like you know pri private doctors when they had private burn cases and stuff like that. Then then after that, I mostly went to people's houses. So um, the la my last patient died at 103. Oh my gosh! You're now, it wasn't nurse. because of Are me. Are you taking credit for <laughs> <No>. that? <laughs> She was a hoot. She was a fighter, that lady. Yeah. That so, word fighter really is a, a, it is. a critical word. Yeah. We in, have in to be, and thing. we have to be fighters. Yeah, yeah. I Even if so you too. get a little depressed at first, you go, okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is it. This is enough. That's right. And yeah. you go for it. You, you go to the next and step. And it helps to have a wonderful family to help yeah. you out. And, you and know, friends. And, <laughs> and very good friends. It just means so much. Well, yeah. you know, you guys think that you're very good friends of ours, but obviously your cheesecake is the reason you're still a good friend. <laughs> and your lemon square. No. What is it? It's no, I make toffee butter bars. Those toffee, oh, toffee. yeah. I mean, I've you're had, not allowed to mm. come to our house without those. Right? <laughs> I, Either I, of those, so. I know that. We cannot. <laughs> that's, I know. That's, that's I part know. of the reason that you're at our house for our Hanukkah parties. Right? I bring those a lot of places. I'm sure you do. <laughs> well, we only have a couple of minutes, so I do want to ask you one more question. Share with the audience something that uh, you would like them to know about you, uh, whether it's cancer or not cancer, just something that you would like them to know. Debbie, you first. Oh, my. Um, enjoy life. Enjoy every day. Get up in the morning and look for something positive. Try and have an attitude of gratitude just because you're up walking around. Oh, that's great. That's so. absolutely wonderful. <laughs> How about you, Tanya? 
Well, you know, a lot of people say, why me for cancer? What, or for other things, why not me? Mm -hmm. I mean, the odds are, you know, we can get it just as much as anybody else of can. Of course. So it's just your attitude and how you, you know, handle things. I think and with a loving family. Yes. Thank true. God. Yes. Yeah. I think both of you have identified uh, such a, a, a great method of dealing with cancer, whether it, and it could be anything. I just want the audience to understand that that cancer is not the end all and be all, and they shouldn't just go down in the dumps and say that's it. And it, especially with the new medication and the, that's, you know what is right. out there for that's them. That's right. So I think for all of us, including myself now, uh, it is something that we have to work on and we have to face, and we will overcome it as best as we can, one way or the other. Gratitude is an absolute necessity absolutely. in understanding what our life is all about and being, uh, I mean, we, we're, we're, you're both involved, actually, you're coming, Tanya, on Sunday to our Kids Hurt Too right. Gala, and you right. supplied some jewelry for yes, our Kids Yes, I Hurt made Tuesday. a uh, cuff oh. for you. Oh, and thank good. You, thank you. <laughs> and that's, and that's all about gratitude. It. That's the gratitude that we have to give to the rest of the world to say thank you, and instead of just taking, mm -hmm. we give back to the community. And good friends. Yes, that's, yeah, that's what friends. makes it all. So thank you to both of you for really coming and joining me today. And sometimes, you know, it's difficult to open up and talk about yeah. what has happened to you. Yeah. You guys were so gracious to do it. So I appreciate it very much. Thank, thank you, you Seymour. Thank you, Seymour. You're welcome. And to you, uh, my friends out there anywhere in the world, uh, we will be back with Seymour's World before Christmas. Uh, we will give you our progress on uh, how I'm doing and what's going on with me. And I think uh, you'll find... Uh, It'll be interesting to see how, how we're able to cope with the individual stresses that we have every day. But I really do like the idea that we're thankful and grateful for everything that we have. So I wish you well. I'll see you in two weeks. Happy holidays to everybody. Aloha from Seymour's World on ThinkTech Hawaii.